Whenever we hear the word mummy, we always tend to think of archaeologists discovering ancient tombs with riches and mummies in them. We think of cringy old movies or the good ones with Brendan Fraser, and of course, ancient Egypt. However, most people seem to forget that mummies were found around the world. Some were mummified deliberately and some not so much. We can safely state that mummification as a process did not belong to one civilization, but many spanning all the way from Asia to the Americas. Are you ready to call on Aksanaman? Number one is <clears throat> erect penis. Everybody's heard of King Tutankhamun, the boy king of Egypt that came into power at the grand age of 10. Though he ruled for only eight or nine years, he successfully rebuilt something that his father destroyed, the polytheistic religion. In turn, he tarnished his father's name and practically completely removed a tin from their pantheon of gods. Now you might be asking, what's all this about an uh, uh, erect penis? Well, Tutankhamun was mummified and buried with one. Imagine the poor bloke who had to do that job as to why we can only speculate. However, one of the most prominent theories is it was his last middle finger to his dead father and his religion. Apparently, an erect penis was connected to the god Osiris, who was from their old pantheon of gods that Tutankhamun's father Akhenaten had banned in service of one god, a ten. Number two is Jaya Sedamu. Now this one is as strange as it is creepy, and I don't know how many people that would like to mummify a seven-year-old girl, let alone ones that would consider it an honor, but here, that's the case. Jaya Sedamu was apparently a huge celebrity of her time, and even at the age of seven, a member of the royal choir, she was made or had the honor to or mm, sing at different temples for pharaohs. I guess we'll never know if she felt as honored as they now make it out to be, but in any case, the young girl star had touched so many people and wielded such influence, she was granted a very elaborate mummification that was generally only applicable to royalty and the ruling class. As fancy as her mummification is, though, they seemingly couldn't have bothered to make the sarcophagus her size. I guess that was too much work for a non-royalty. Well, we hope you've uh, <clears throat> wrapped your brain around these two examples. I know I already learned two new things today. And in any case, if you like the content, subscribe and leave a comment saying, I subscribed, and I'll personally reply to your comment. Number three, Ginger. Nope, not the ones with no soul that you see shambling around from time to time and definitely not the one you use to cook with. Although there are very sick people and I'm practically sure there's been at least one instance in history where some special case decided it would be a good idea to eat part or maybe even the whole mummy. So Ginger is one of the oldest mummies found in Egypt and dates all the way back to 3000 BC. The mummification process has not yet been a thing in Egypt back then, so this poor chap got mummified by the desert sand, stabbed in the back and left for dead in the sands to try and dry the moisture out to get him mummified not a good way to go. Now imagine going dune surfing and stumbling over this thing on your vacation. Number four is Valley of the Golden Mummies. Now this is a story how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, just sit right here. I'll tell you how I found 10,000 mummies here. Uh, at least that's what we're assuming the donkey who found the accursed hole would wrap when he fell into the opening in the desert floor. Then again, he might have died happier, knowing that his little accident led to a treasure trove of archaeological artifacts, ancient Egyptian riches, and of course, 10,000 mummies mummified in four different ways. Considering the story is actually true, which it probably isn't, in 1996, some antiquities guard stumbled upon the finding when riding a donkey. What initially thought was a tomb housing about 250 mummies turned out to have 10,000 of them, along with coins, gilded mask, jewelry. Did the donkey get thanks? Of course not. Well, how you been holding up so far? Would you have preferred to find the Valley of the Golden Mummies, or do you just feel sorry for that donkey? How would you spend that money if you found that kind of treasure and could keep it? While you're thinking on those answers, why not check out the other videos on the channel like this video and comment on what your answers are. Number five, Steve Irwin's worst nightmare. 
Oh, the beloved crocodile hunter, not to be mixed with Crocodile Dundee, has left a gaping hole in all our hearts. The Aussie animal lover met an untimely death, and we know that the stingray didn't really mean it. Well, what we want to believe, though, that Steve Irwin would find practice of mummifying crocodiles absolutely horrendous. But this is exactly what the ancient Egyptians did. The Egyptians mummified crocodiles in hopes they could appease their gods and get favor with the crocs and not be brutally eaten. Considering there were many crocodile gods, you just have to wonder how many people got killed trying to kill a crocodile to mummify it so they didn't get killed by the crocodile. <laughs> Funny enough, crocodile mummies often contain papyri, covering Egyptian everyday life and thus had great value to archaeologists who initially were annoyed at finding so many of these things. Number six, the foremost of noble ladies. What or who would be worth foremost of anything other than Chuck Norris, of course? In my personal opinion, nothing and no one. Archaeologists, though, have a completely different understanding of the world, and so we have a Hatshepsut as the topic of conversation now. Why, you ask? Well, Hatshepsut was one of the most important leaders of ancient Egypt. Not only has she held a grip over Egypt for an incredibly long time, but also achieved great military victories and led the country by assuming male clothing and gaining titles only reserved to males. She was acing everything. This lady achieved so much that her successor, her stepson, Thutmos III, tried to erase any trace of her. Well, he failed, but in a sense, so did the archaeologist who initially found her. Thankfully, people got smarter in 1990 and got her mummy out. Hmm. Number seven, it's too tattooed. Tattoos are an incredibly popular piece of accoutrement in this day and age. However, we don't even have to look far back in history to understand they were reserved either for a certain class of people or carried a significance of their achievements. And it was completely cross-cultural. Whether we took the prison population of the USSR and the post-Soviet countries, the Japanese with their Yakuza, or even the Samoans that never actually had bad connotations with tattoos. The art of tattoo, however, is ancient, as proven by this example. Archaeologists discovered an incredibly rare find when they got their hands on these tattooed people, sporting tattoos of rams, bulls, and what looked like S and L letters. Sadly, even now, we have no idea of the true meaning of the tattoos or the reasoning behind them. How many new things have you learned up till now? Well, I know I've gotten some new interesting factoids. But however, if you think this is good, just wait a little longer. I'm sure we're about to blow your mind. Number eight is poor pets. Now, we covered crocodiles before, but for any animal lover, this is going to hit especially hard. Crocodiles were not the only animals that had been mummified in ancient Egypt. Oh, no, these guys went all out. Not only did they have no decency and mummify their children, they had to go and mummify their animals. Now, you might say they love them very much. Well, great. Make sure they go to a nice home when you die and don't take them with you, you selfish prick. Who in their right mind would kill an animal, get rid of its organs, and mummify it for their own pleasure when they're already dead? Well, the ancient Egyptians did. They took everyone and everything with them from gold to baboons and beetles. Call PETA and sick them on these archeological sites. Number nine, I lost my mind. Have you heard of the guy that did the brain surgery on himself? Well, apparently it all just happened in his head. <laughs> yeah, dad joke aside, this is one of the most gruesome yet one of the most important advancements in mummification processes. Around 1500 BC, the Egyptians realized that internal organs were quite detrimental to the preservation of mummies. Thus, long bamboo and palm wires entered the scene. These ingenious blokes thought of a way to make a hole in the skull near the nose, scramble the brain like eggs, and take it out. Naturally, not everything in life goes as planned, and archaeologists have managed to find mummies with extremely shoddy work, and even pieces of tools left behind in the skull where the human brain should be. Number 10 is the oldest mummy. Now, I don't know about you, but my whole childhood, I believe that mummification processes was something the Egyptians excelled at. Then eventually, I learned that mummification was quite a global phenomenon. Apparently, people wanted their dead relatives hanging around. And today, I learned that the actual oldest intentional mummy was much older than the Egyptian ancient mummies. 
and not by a couple of years or a couple of hundred, but by a millennia. Now the Chinchoro mummies might try to argue the point, but the Spirit Cave mummy from Fallon, Nevada is actually the oldest intentional mummy ever at least according to the Wheelers, who happen to be archaeologists. 9,400 years old, that's how old they say the mummy is, and that really shook the archaeological world. We hope you really, really enjoyed this list and learned something new, or better yet, we hope we piqued your interest in pursuit of further knowledge. Learning new things is always a good thing, so find some time and dedicate it to knowledge or health. And in the meantime, why not check out the other videos on the channel and leave us a comment with something you'd like to see in the future.